what is up Facebook how are you guys doing it's Tuesday it is time for lunch break brought to you by Rectech powered by Kingsford it's Irish week all week long we're bringing you our very best Irish recipes to get your St. Patrick's Day kicked off to the fullest well without any further ado I'm gonna pass it on over to my main man your master chef Greg Muller What's up, Rectech family? I'm Chef Greg, and wrong cam right camera, wrong camera, we're here live on the Rectech deck. Appreciate you guys joining us for another episode of Lunch Break, presented by Rectech, powered by Kingsford. It is Irish week. And you know what, Chef John? I think it's time to let the shenanigans begin. Let the shenanigans begin, because Chef Greg. Because even Gordo, okay, I'm calling you out, Gordon Ramsay, you yourself are going to be envious of this right here, because we're going to show you guys how to make a delicious authentic shepherd's pie okay st patty's day is right around the corner that's right and and unfortunately people only eat like you know corned beef and cabbage like once a year i love some corned beef mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm. smoke that bad boy off make some delicious pastrami okay but you guys got to do us a favor go ahead and smash that share button right now three two one smash, smash it. it that way all of your friends and family can be out there and you know embrace this delicious irish cuisine but if you guys have any questions or comments, drop them down below in the That's comment right. section. Chef John is on the ones and twos over there. He'll, uh, he'll relay said messages and let us know what's going on. Now, Chef Greg, what is the difference between shepherd's pie and cottage pie? God, good question, Chef John. All right, so shepherd's pie traditionally is made with lamb mince, right? Not mince, M-I-N-T-S, but mince, M-I-N-C-E, or ground lamb. Um, mutton is very popular as well. Cottage pie is if you're going to substitute, say, ground beef. But if you want to lighten it up a little bit and use ground turkey, ground chicken, mm, okay. you can make a delicious, you know, variant of shepherd's pie by using uh, other ground or mince meats. That's what I'm talking if about. If I had my way, I'd put a little, like, you know, liver pudding in there. Ooh. I love, love, love me some <clears throat> blood sausage. So you could, you could mix anything in that shepherd's pie. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's it, you have to just kind of get creative and embrace, you know, the uh, you know the inner chef inside of you. It's like uh, what was that guy's name in uh, uh, was it Remy, the guy living in the hat upstairs? Yes. Yeah. That's just right. embrace your inner, inner Remy and, and yeah. put something good in it. But we are burning those delicious Kingsford signature blend pellets. I mean, it's the perfect balance of mesquite, cherry, and oak right there in these RT three forties right behind me. We got two of them. Okay. Like two Utes. Two Utes. Right there. Two Utes. Okay. We're going like Jersey, Ireland. I mean, we're, we're all, all over the place, place today. Keep up. Keep but guys, up. check it out. Go, join us at rectech.com. You guys can find these RT340s on sale right now with 220 pounds of pellets, $6.99 free shipping. You can also upgrade to the pellet package with the purchase of any grill on the website. 220 pounds of pellets save you some good bit of money there. It's like $120 in savings. Super simple. Um, but I like to kind of like break up my lamb and uh, ground beef, 50-50. Because not everybody in my house likes lamb. It is a little bit more of a fragrant, uh, I'll say a more robust flavor profile. For I sure. love it, okay? Give me a rack of lamb all day long. Mm -hmm. You can keep that mint jelly, mm -hmm. but I'll take that rack of lamb. But uh, lamb mints has such a robust flavor and fattiness to it. Absolutely dynamite. So and you can find it at your local grocery store. It's not uncommon, especially this time of year, to see uh, good, fresh uh, lamb mints. We're going to keep calling it mince the rest of the show because I'm just waiting for Gordon Ramsay to come over here and call me like a muffin or something. <laughs> so shout out, Gordon. I know you're in the Augusta area. Those of you who might not know he is in the Augusta area, just tell him to come on by. Tell him to come Maybe by. Gordon will bring me a Guinness because I feel kind of bad about drinking the Blue Bomber. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. wearing a shenanigans tie. Yeah. Like, we need a nice, you know, Guinness drought. You do have Jameson on the table, so, you know. 4301 Evans to Locks Road. Where <laughs> we're at right now. We do. We have some Jamesons because we got to rectify this recipe a little bit, okay? Yeah. So why can't we, uh, you know, get a little crazy with it? Maybe we're going to take a little, you know, the blue can bomber. No, Ooh, I wouldn't do that. That's, that's gross. Yeah. Can't do that. Okay. i got to work the rest of the day. Yeah. All right. But I've got a uh, RT340 preheated. I'm going to open up this package of uh, lamb mince here and go ahead and combine it with uh, that ground beef. We're going to put this in a cast iron skillet. 
and we're going to cook this off and render this out. It's only going to take a couple minutes. Again, the beauty of this grill, 340 square inches of cook space, plenty of room for a couple racks of ribs, some pork butts, brisket, anything from briskets, biscuits, pizzas, and pies, That's all on that grill right here. The beauty of it is this is portable, okay? So if you live, you know, that lifestyle on the road, you're traveling, camping, tailgating, these legs fold up flat. The grill, I'm not going to touch it because it's hot right now, has a luggage handle on the top. About 90 pounds, pick that grill up, put it right on the back of your tailgate, put it inside of the forward storage compartment of your uh, RV or motor coach. Again, 24 inches high when collapsed. Plenty of room for all that delicious food. Chef John's got his hand up. And now, I know he's got a great question because he's smiling ear to ear right now. They want to know, could you do this recipe on any of our grills? Absolutely. It doesn't matter if you're using the uh, RTB 3 to Bullseye or the RT2500. You know, you can do this recipe on any of our grills. And the beauty of adding you know, that uh, Kingsford signature blend pellets is you're going to get a really good robustness and, uh, and flavor to your food, and it, it makes a difference. You know, you can find these pellets all over your local grocery stores, hardware stores, you know, dollar stores even. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they were waving at right there. But it, was, uh, it was something flying. Okay. I mean, they want to they get some good food around they here. They definitely do. All right, so you can put all your vegetables in a food processor. Um, Typically, it's a finer, you know, mince or uh, dice on your vegetables because it needs to be a very cohesive balance of vegetables to, uh, to the meat, okay? Now, if you've got some leftover, you know, maybe some lamb stew, Ooh. pretty sure uh, Chef John rocked out some uh, Irish oatmeal uh, stew yesterday. Sure enough, did. You can take that uh, braised lamb and pull it and use that in your shepherd's pie, I guarantee that will not suck. That's what I'm talking about, yeah, Chef Greg. Yeah, buddy. But again, a nice uh, kind of small dice on this. And this is peasant food. These are things that, you know, they would utilize leftover braised lamb that you can, you know, uh, repurpose. You know, shepherd's pie, honestly, is leftovers, okay? It's leftover mashed potatoes. We'll get to that in a little bit. It's leftover kind of vegetables, mince meats, things like that. Um, and we got Irish fair coming at you all week long all week long I'm super excited for it that's right so maybe we'll see a coddle or two i don't know <laughs> maybe you know yeah, but you definitely want to stay tuned because at four o'clock on rec tech's twitter page we'll be going live meet jordan go. johnson we're gonna twitter be doing tweets. a little twitter tweets now i'm not gonna dice these carrots because i'm lazy okay. box grater ah. okay i'm not even gonna peel them i am gonna cut off i did wash them but if there's any like funky ends like that's kind of i don't know not attractive just cut it off Look but you can that. grate these I like that trick. You can grate the onion. You can grate the celery. Like I said, if you've got a food processor, great. Nice sharp knife. Fantastic. you got a box grater, just, just go for it. That's what I'm talking about. You know, you make a mess, just give us a call. We'll send Sherpa over to clean it. You know, he's good like that. Hey, uh, Chef Greg, Andy Kraft is out here. He said he would love to see us do some videos on a knife section and skill type videos, knife skills. You know, maybe you follow us on all social media and maybe something like that happens. Mm -hmm. It's not a, you know, we don't really sell knives around here, so we can uh, maybe do that on a different channel, but make sure you follow myself on all social media at Chef Greg Muller. You can give uh, Chef John a follow, uh, give uh, your barbecue dad, Jody Flanagan, a follow as well. And uh, you never know what you might see. You know, we might be wearing goofy ties one day. We might be, uh, I don't know, out on the lake fishing. Who you never, knows? You never know. You never know what's going to happen. Mm -mm. Okay? You never know. But if you follow us on all social media, you're going to know because you're on the inside. Speaking of insiders, make sure you guys join the newsletter at rectech.com. Scroll to the bottom of any page on the website. Go ahead and put your email address in there. And you can get the latest and greatest around promotions, sales, content, events. I mean, it's warming up nice. The weather is looking absolutely dynamite that's right so you, don't forget about movie night every friday right when the sun goes down we ooh, are watching ooh. a fantastic movie this week coming up is toy story yeah, yeah so don't forget about um you know bringing your friends and family out here ten dollars a car mm -hmm. okay you can bring a church van you can ten bucks ten bucks okay ten bucks movie starts at 7 30 gates open at six yeah buddy we have food trucks out here the uh rec tech playground has been freshly sanitized it's Each a good and every week. That's right. Bring your dog. Dog friendly. Yeah. We have uh, we have poop stations. We, def we definitely the dogs, do. dogs. Okay. <laughs> we have poop stations for the people, too. We do. But, I mean, you know, no one wants to talk about that. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and give this a quick stir. And the one thing you want to keep in mind with lamb, again, 
can be a little uh, on the fattier side. So you really want to cook this about like 90% and then drain the fat off. Okay, that's Because good you tip. don't want a greasy shepherd's pie. Okay, Gordon would yell at you if your shepherd's pie is greasy. Okay, I, he would try to yell at you regardless, I think. But definitely, if your shepherd's pie. Gordon, was I got something for you, buddy. Yeah, Bring he does. it. Yeah. Okay, join us here, Evans Locks Road, forty three zero one, in beautiful Evans, Georgia. There is not a cloud in the sky mm -hmm. over there. Mm -mm. It's gorgeous. We're nice in this little shaded area under the uh, the Rec Tech deck, the breezeway. But Gordon Ramsay, come on, buddy, because you ain't got nothing about this shepherd's pie. No. Nope. Throwing out there, respectfully, of course. Chef John, <laughs> any good questions coming in? Uh, Anybody got, bringing us a Guinness yet? Nobody's brought us a Guinness yet. Chef Greg, you got 170 people out here. They're all tuned in. They all say this looks absolutely delicious. All right, 170 people. Go ahead and smash that share button right now because we can get more people to watch this. It definitely helps us. Who doesn't want to learn how to make shepherd's pie? Because there's a secret ingredient right here, mm -hmm. okay? But mm -hmm. I can't tell you what it is just yet because you guys got to do me a favor and smash that share button. Okay, go ahead and tag some buddies down below. Let us know. But my secret ingredient for shepherd's pie. Okay, now I am not a big advocate on like a protein substitute, okay. plant-based uh, protein. Okay. But I am an advocate for like bumping up umami and flavor profiles in food. So for me, I grab some mushrooms. Okay, some baby portobellos. I'll put them in the food processor and I'll pulse them. And this almost looks like ground beef. You can always find this at the grocery store already done for you. This is really going to amplify up like the flavor, the depth, the robustness into your food. You don't like mushrooms? Don't worry, okay? okay? You'll mix it all in there. You'll never know they are there. But as far as additional flavor and meatiness, mm -hmm. secret ingredient, okay? Not traditional. Okay, but you know we've got to rectify it a little bit. That's right. right. I'm just saying. Now, Chef Greg, we have a few uh, new people joining in. What is? What are we doing today? What is going on? Can you give us a recap? We are showing you guys how to make the most epic shepherd's pie ever. And we're making shepherd's pie because we're using ground lamb. Is there a car behind us? Are they bringing us? Nope, no Guinness. It's okay. <laughs> Maybe next time. All right, I'm going to grab this, uh, this pan off of here. Okay, and I'm going to drain off this grease. Okay. Now, while we're talking about grease real quick, Chef Greg, I got a question from Bill Vogg. He asks, uh, how do I prevent grease fires when I'm cooking bacon on my grill? So you want to keep temps, you know, 325, 350. Um, I use a grill mat. Start with a good, clean grill. Make sure uh, your heat deflector is installed correctly. And then before your next cook, okay, make sure you clean your grill again. Don't go crazy and crank that grill up to, you know, 500 degrees before you have a chance to clean it, okay? It's What's the optimal temperature for cooking bacon on our I grill? like 325. I'm a 325 Excellent. kind of guy. Excellent. Okay. Um, you know, any hotter than that, you're going to burn it. Any lower than that, it just takes too long. So mm -hmm. I'm a 325 on a grill mat. And now don't forget to take the opportunity to season your bacon. Okay. Yeah. You, you heard that right. That's right. We season our bacon around here. A little of that Rossaruski's honey rib rub on top of that bacon before you cook it. It is absolutely delicious okay because again you got to take every opportunity mm -hmm. to just bring that flavor that's it like to the penthouse okay we're no ground level apartment in flavor town around here okay no. we live like with the best vantage points the best views the rooftop pools that's where you want to be cooking you on your be. rt340 that's right. with those kingsford signature blend pellets right there but sherp check this out see this grease in here Ooh. okay there's a good bit in here Minus that nugget of meat that we're not going to let get lost. Now, what you, if you wanted to, you can strain out uh, that grease versus the, um, the liquid in there. And you can make your roux with lamb fat. Ooh, Again, that's what I'm talking other about. ways to up the flavor in your food. It's that simple. Chef John, what you got? This one's coming from John Starjevich. John Starjevich, you bringing us some Guinness? He asked, how many pounds of mushrooms did uh, Chef Greg uh, process? So this is just an eight ounce package. Eight ounce package, that's it, all day long. Super simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, you can use more. Now, if you wanted to do uh, a truly vegetarian you know, shepherd's pie, you can use mushrooms. Um, obviously, you can use a mushroom stock in lieu of our uh, lamb stock or uh, demi-gloss beef stock. But yeah, tons of flavor in these mushrooms right here. All right, we have another question coming from, Je I guess this is your brother, Jeff Muller. He He's asked, not, but he can bring us some Guinness. That's Jeff, what I'm talking about. Good to see you, buddy. Jeff says, do you know where uh, the shepherd pie got its, uh, where it originated? I do not, but Jeff, I do have a question for you. 
was your last name spelled with the U with an umlaw, and they just added the E in there, because that's what happened to us. Oh. So we could be related, maybe, I don't know, way I back like where it. somewhere. I haven't the slightest clue where Shepherd's Pie got its name, okay? So the but you know where the, blow, you, know. you know what region it started it came from, what area it came from, right? Yeah, no, having the slightest clue. It's I'm say, I'm saying it's Bavarian. Bulgarian. Bulgarian. Bavarian. 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 Okay, if Bavarian Chef John's right or wrong, now we usually we have our uh, resident fact checker Jordan Johnson, you know, on the uh, yeah. you know the the fact checking train around here, <laughs> but you know we don't we don't worry Bavarian. about that. I know it's delicious. That's Bavarian. what I care about. I'm okay, Bavarian. I mean. But it could be Bavarian. I don't know. <laughs> Bring us some Guinness. All right, Sherpa, let's just give this a quick stir here. Again, doesn't take very long to get these vegetables cooking down. We got those onions, carrots, Man, celery. Man, it smells so good out here. Yeah, but let's make it smell better, John. Yes. Let's go ahead and uh, kick it up with that Colton's freaking Greek. Okay. Some nice herbiness, salt, pepper. Now, I don't know if it's traditional or not, but that nutmeg in that cold and freaking creek really sets it off child please heifer dust right this is irish heifer dust limited edition <laughs> not a real product not available on the website <laughs> yeah buddy but look at this getting nice we'll go ahead and add our mushrooms in here now the mushrooms are going to have a good bit of liquid so it's going to take a little while to cook that liquid out of them um, the more time you spend here, the better. Okay. So let this go for maybe, you know, 10, 15 minutes and really, like, cook down and get extra flavorful. Because, again, okay, it takes a little bit of time to make it, like, super, super, super flavorful. Don't rush it, okay? But what you can rush right now, smash that share button. Okay. That's right. Three Chef John is out here in wearing short eight inch, eight inch shorts. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, full thigh. Thankfully, he went to the tanning bed before, so I'm not <laughs> blinded by the light. That's but, right. But uh, you know, it's it's leg day around here at Rectech. Apparently, I didn't get the memo. All right. So Joanne Jones says, according to Google, it is from England. Chef Greg, the origins of Shepherd's Pie. Okay. So yeah. we're all wrong. Yeah, but it's still delicious. Still delicious. Okay. But we're going to avoid the potato famine because we're going to make a delicious shepherd's pie today with an amazing Parmesan mash on the top. Ooh, okay. Uh, Gordon Ramsay, I'm waiting on you, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. I've never met somebody that, like, avoids a call out worse than Gordon Ramsay. Okay. Everybody just tag Gordon Ramsay in the post down below. That's let's so get funny. him here to the Worldwide Headquarters of RecTech and uh, let's show him a thing or two That's so about, uh, about food. But we've got to get some fresh herbs going. So we've got some beautiful rosemary from the Rectech Garden, literally located, I don't know, about 600 yards That's up right, the hill. up the hill. So we've got some beautiful uh, rosemary and thyme because a little bit of freshness goes a long way. We also, fun fact, have some fresh peas. These are fresh English peas. Ooh. Right here. And we're going to go ahead and just, uh, just all you got to do is take the stems and just, go backwards and you can save all these stems put them in your stocks super super delicious um i just love the aroma of fresh thyme yeah like fresh herbs in general chef Greg. maybe i'll put some fresh herbs on top of my heat deflector get some fresh herbal aroma in the grill why not That's but i got my trusty green handled knife here so no leprechauns like stevie frederick's are going to get me <laughs> That's funny. They're starting to tag uh, Gordon Ramsay in the comments tag section. Tag him. Show. Let's get Gordo here. He probably <laughs> hates being called Gordo. He probably does hate it. Yeah. But you know what? I give mad props to Gordon Ramsay. His autobiography, super cool. He was actually uh, a professional football player until his uh, feet were so jacked up he couldn't play football anymore. Yeah, uh, soccer. Well, you know, they call it football over Yeah, there, well, England you know. football. You know, I was just helping all of our, uh, you know, United States fans. That's okay. But you know what? How cool would it be to have an academy get Gordo here? Just saying. I would love to get Gordo here, man. I do have to give him a hard time because timeout. We'll just we're just gonna call call it out. Let's I mean, call him just, out. So he was teaching his daughter how to cook a brisket the other day. Yeah. He put it in the oven. Yeah, y'all. Gordon, give me a call. We'll get you a Rectech, buddy. For real. Jeez, and I can't believe he's still cooking his brisket in the oven. All that money, no sense. Mm mm mm. I know, right? Mm mm mm. So we're gonna just get a little bit of that herbalage going. Gotta love these concave cutting boards. They're great to cut on, but hard to scoop stuff off of. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add our herbage in here. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of our 
flour and we'll start to make a roux. What pellets are we using today, Chef? We Greg? got those Kingsford signature blend pellets. It's the perfect balance of mesquite, cherry, and oak. Now these are some new bags, aren't they, Chef Greg? John, you can't get nothing past I'm you. I'm just saying, keep yeah, stepping it up. Yeah, these are some swanky packaging. Um, you got super sexy labeling. And here's a cheat here. Get in there, Sherp. Kings for cherrywood pellets, doing a nice roast chicken. Don't forget the grilled lemon, okay? Yeah, baby. Citrus is a way to really up the flavor game. Yeah, baby. Jameson's. This bottle is almost empty because uh, I think Jody got a hold of it. Yeah, Irish whiskey, okay? <laughs> Normally you would use red wine, not today. Not Why? today. Why? Because this is the most epic shepherd's pie ever. That's right. And what I've tip are you some, rolling this thing at, Chef Greg? Uh, we're at 500. Okay. So I've got some delicious uh, beef stock, and we're going to cook this down until everything gets happy, happy, happy. And I'm going to add the meat back in there in just a little bit, but I want to give it a head start nice. because I only added about half of what I'm going to need. That's if I add about. too much of it, what could happen? It's just going to kind of like get too soupy, and then it just takes more time to cook down. Reduction is flavor. So, again, if you were to start with a half a gallon of that delicious stock, cook it down to a quarter of a, a, a gallon, it's going to be way more flavorful. Why? All of those flavors are just going to meld down and marry and get happy, happy, happy. God, I'm sorry, Jody. I used all your Irish whiskey. I don't think I'll mind. Jeff John, good question. Yeah, this was coming from Andy Cowley. He asks, will the 340 handle a 15-plus pound brisket? Absolutely. You can fit about an 18-pound brisket in there, no problem. Um, again, you've got plenty of room, 19 and 3 quarter inches wide to cook. So easily two racks of ribs, two butts, one large brisket. It'll handle whole chickens, whole turkeys. You can cook a whole turkey in RT340. You can fit a uh, smaller uh, hen in there, so that 12 to 14 pound turkey. If you're gonna cook uh, a, the bigger turkeys, the toms, those 20 pounders, definitely recommend spatchcocking those. You can fit those in there. Fits all day long. Um, it's actually Chef John's favorite grill. Sure enough, it's is. smaller than his shorts. I, I okay, you don't believe me? We'll, we'll show you later. Love that grill. Just also too, another thing about that grill that I love is the recovery time because it's so small. The mm -hmm. chamber's smaller. Yeah. It actually recovers a lot faster than our larger grills. Yeah, and it will cook just a little bit faster than its larger counterparts. And a lot of it has to do with the reflective energy in the grill. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit closer to the heat source. Um, so you might notice maybe those cooks happen just a little bit faster. There's nothing wrong with that. Just enjoy your rectech lifestyle and, you know, live it up with a goofy tie. Why not? Right. All right, this one's coming from uh, Paul. <laughs> Paul asks, would the signature uh, pellets be comparable to the rectech blend? So the rectech blend uh, is going to be the red oak, white oak, and hickory. It's a very uh, mild, balanced flavor to those pellets, right? So mesquite is going to be a very more pronounced flavor. Maple is going to give you a little bit of color and sweetness to it. So the Kingsford pellets are different in, in flavor uh, than the Rectech Ultimate Blend, um, but it really depends on how you want to live your Rectech lifestyle. You know, for me, I don't get crazy changing pellets. I do change flavors from time to time as I'm cooking, you know, throughout the grill, but if I'm cooking fish, you can cook anything with, uh, with these uh, pellets behind me, whether it's the Signature, the Classic, the Cherry Wood. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Just mm -hmm. all, all delicious stuff. So whether you're making creme brulee, Mm -hmm. Okay, or smoke sweet potato biscuits. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, you can use any of the Kingsford pellets. It's going to be really, really, really delicious. It doesn't take long, guys, because, again, 500 degrees, it's already starting to simmer and get thick. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, see how nice and thick that's getting? <laughs> yeah, Sherpa. All right, we're going to grab this mince meat, okay, and add this back in here. And you can do the same thing in a Dutch oven or a cast iron skillet. I like cooking on cast iron. Like, if it worked for grandma, it can work for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda break up some of those clumps. And you see how it's, there's not like a ton of liquid in there. That's kinda what you want, okay? But we're gonna cook this down. I'm actually gonna add just a little bit more of that, that stock in there. Whoop. That looks absolutely delicious, Chef Greg. So as this thickens and simmers, that flour is going to uh, coagulate. That roux is going to thicken that up. So we're just going to let this go for, like I said, maybe 15, 20 minutes or so, and it's going to tighten up. Okay. God, Chef it's, Greg, it's Kevin. It's already been a 25-minute show. Yeah, I, Kevin I, Fuller like says hello started. too. Do I know? Kevin, Kevin? Fuller. Kevin Fuller says hello. He wanted me to Kevin tell you. Fuller. We got to call him back about Academy. Yeah. All right, fresh peas. Okay, I'm just gonna put them on the top. 
Ooh. That's it. Fresh peas. Super simple. But I told you we got a surprise for you. Yeah, I boy. do. Because we already made one. You know we're not going to make you wait. I mean, I'm not waiting. Uh -uh. You you can wait all you want. I'm, I'm not, not going to do not it. I'm not going to wait. Sherpa, get on in here. But before we open this lid of this RT340, you guys got to do me a favor. Smash that share button. Comment down below. If you are ready to see the most epic shepherd's pie ever, if you want to get Gordon Ramsay here mm -hmm. to eat this and give me, like, you know, the one-bite review on the shepherd's pie, bring it, buddy. Come on. All right, so count it down with me. Three, two, one. Smash, smash that it. share button. Check it out right here. Ooh, lordy. That's looking Man, good. Man, that looks so good. This is good. a massive casserole. If you get a little leakage on the side, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You got a Sherpa to clean it up. That's right. Okay. This is just a, uh, a porcelain uh, baking dish. Perfectly safe to use. If it's oven safe, it's good for you. But we took oh, 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 oh. Man, some that looks amazing, so good. super creamy mashed potatoes. We layered it over the top. I did sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan cheese, mm. some smoked salt on the top of that. Mm. And then I just took a fork and just kind of caressed it. Okay. Wow, that looks with absolutely some delicious, delicious. Deliciousness right there. Guys, show um, some Chef Greg some love. I need some hearts. Charlie, give me a big old spoon. Some wow so faces. Now, you can see this is a volcanic mass that is mm -hmm. ready to rip and ruin your frenulum. Sure enough is. Okay. You really want to let this sit because. If you go in there like a savage animal, okay, you're going to burn yourself. You're gonna, you're you gonna don't want to do that. Yeah, you're going to pay the price. Okay? You don't want to do that. The barbecue girls are jealous <laughs> of this right here, okay? This amazing shepherd's pie. Amazing. Um, but we got our peas in here, our vegetables, carrots, onions, celery. We've got that mince of lamb. We've got that ground beef. We've got those mushrooms, right? It's in here. It's going to be amazing. Chef John, what you got, buddy? All right, so how long, after you got everything mixed, you put the mashed potatoes on the top, yep. how long did you leave it in the RT340, and what temperature did you cook it at? 350 degrees for about an hour, okay? And it honestly depends on how much uh, of the mixture you have, how big your pan is. So this is a massive pan. This is enough to feed Chef John and myself and no one else. That's right. Okay? We're a little greedy around here when it comes to good food because, I mean. That's right. Look at us. We kind of have the best jobs ever because ever. we get to cook the best food on the best grills with the best fuel. Mm -hmm. Why would we not want to keep it all to ourselves? <laughs> but I'm just kidding. If you bring us a Guinness, you have like maybe five more minutes before we get off the air. I'm actually surprised someone hasn't brought us a Guinness yet. Usually I mean, people are like. The gas station's right there. It's kind of a bougie gas station. Hoping to stop by. You, know, you, you have go had to, a, go to the pumping station. You bring us some Guinness. They give you some Shepherd's You pie. have had a couple people say that if you did a show at six, they'd be more than happy. No, to we're stop not doing a show at six. And, and okay? bring you some food. I got a soccer game tonight. We can't do it at six. If you want to show at six, you can join us for after hours. Yeah, that's right. Because we do that uh, at five o'clock. I got forks over here, John. Okay. That's what happens with the uh, the white china plates. It kind of blends in with the uh, <laughs> the high end china. But let's go ahead. And we're going to kind of, oh, but see, look at this. Those potatoes have like a nice crust on it. Oh. Man, oh, man. God, I almost hate to like dig into this. It but I'm sorry, not sorry. Actually delicious, Chef Greg. Yeah, you know what, John? Ooh. This does not suck. Guys, but I'm going to go ahead, if Chef If you want to up this, you can serve this with some soda bread. Oh. If you want a great recipe for soda bread, make sure you follow uh, Barbecue Dad, Jody Flanagan yes. on all social media. He will show you how to make the most amazing soda bread, okay? Because he's actually Irish, okay? Mm-hmm. Me and Chef John, not so much. Black Irish. You're black Irish? Yeah. Is that like blackish? Yeah. That's okay. like I'm 132nd Irish. One, you're 132nd ir Irish. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Yeah. I didn't realize uh, the... Uh, the tape measure of <laughs> genealogy got got that small. You have to pay extra for that, Chef. Okay, you have to so pay that was extra like on, uh, on Ancestry.com? Yeah, yeah. All right. For Did sure. you, I got to get you a new battery for your tie. Oh, it was working a second ago. All right, so if you guys want the shenanigans to begin, go ahead and smash that share button so me and Chef John can burn our frenulums right. with this amazing shepherd's pie. If That's you right. want this recipe and more, make sure you guys subscribe to the recipes. So go to rectech.com slash lunch break. Put your email address in there. We'll send this recipe out to you. Is this going to burn our frenulum? Dude, this is, uh, I am so excited to eat this. I've never wanted to eat something more and not at the same time because. Yeah, cheers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I feel like a fire baby wagon. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, mine's good. That was perfect temperature. But like. Absolutely the, delicious. The velvetiness 
of like the lamb fat. Yep. The sweetness of those fresh peas. Mm -hmm. The caramelized vegetables. The creamy potatoes. Mm hmm. So I mean, good. This does not suck. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jody's not out here. You'd be missing it. Mm. I can't eat it. Woo! Uh, good. Mm. Hot and delicious, Chef Greg. Another. I think killer. I lost the roof of my mouth. <laughs> yep. I can feel it like getting soft. But guys, make sure you follow us on all social media. Join us later today when Chef John and Jordan go live for Twitter tweets. That's at 4 o'clock on the Rectech Twitter channel. Tomorrow, the girls of Rectech, the ladies of Rectech, are going live at 12 o'clock on Facebook for barbecue. Later on that night, we've got uh, um, After Hours with mm -hmm. Chef John, Jody, and myself. Sure you know we're bringing you amazing content all week long. Thursday, lunch break, Jody's going to go live on YouTube at 12 o'clock. And then Chef John's going to kind of bring up the rear like he loves to do with a little bit of late night you know lunches it. at 11 o'clock on Instagram. And then Fun Day Friday, you might want to win yourself something, okay? And if you want to win yourself something, you got to watch last week's Fun Day Friday so you can see what happened when we spun that Wheel of Rectech. So you yourself might be a winner. And then join us for a movie night here every Friday night uh, at the Worldwide Headquarters of Rectech. Sure. This week is going to be Toy Story. It's a fantastic movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got like Buzz, Woody, mm -hmm. Mr. Potato Head. Oh, the whole gang. The whole gang. Is he still Mr. Potato Head then? He no, Absolutely. In the movie, he's Mr. Potato because he's yeah. not Mr. Potato Head anymore, right? He, he's still Mr. Potato Head. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. because there's Mrs. Potato Head. There you go. So you can have both, okay? <laughs> if you want two Mr. Potato Heads or two Mrs. Potato Heads or one of each, just go for it. We're going off on a tangent here. Back to Shepherd's Pie. Make sure you guys subscribe to us on all social media. From all of us here at the Worldwide Headquarters of RecTech, God bless you, God bless the United States, and we will see you at, at the RecTech. Rec do, 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 do. Do, 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 wreck, take a lifestyle, set it and come get it. When the sun starts going down, live, live your life the way you like. It's wreck, take a lifestyle. Do, 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 do. do, do, do. do, do, do. do, do, do.